Broadcast Network, After Buzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey everyone, welcome to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm Matt Lee. Oh wait, no, I'm not Matt, Matt Lieberman. Uh, Matt Lieberman is not here with <laughs> us. I'm taking over. I apologize in advance. I am not nearly as much fun as Matt Lieberman, but my panel is amazing. So well, let's go around the table. Joyce. Hello everybody. Good and to be back. Megan. Hi, everyone. And we still got a man on the panel. We got Zach. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm filling in for Matt Lieberman. You don't have to turn down your dials this week. <laughs> <laughs> you None of us let, are going to be as loud, you unless you want us to stay. be. <laughs> and I'm Kristen Carroll, and I'll be um, I'll be leading this team today. I'm filling in. I'm stepping in like uh, like Coulson for Nick Fury. Nick Fury. We're following your lead, director. You got this. Exactly. Was that me? Me? I'm like a merc? <laughs> I only come you in occasionally. Be hunter. Somebody who oh, comes. I don't want to be hunter. <laughs> you're like Simmons. You appear occasionally. I'm on loan to another organization. <laughs> you're not quite the regular yet. Please tell me that you're actually here and that you're not a figment of our collective imaginations. I can neither confirm or deny. Oh no! <laughs> Happy to comply. Um, oh. <laughs> let's get into this. They start off right off the bat. We're in Miami, Florida, having a good time, um, and we find out this this church burned down, and and there's a painting in there, and again we saw kind of from the previews what we were getting into, but there's all that alien writing on the back that survived, which means that somebody out there besides Coulson is is dealing with the same thing. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't know that at the beginning. Did you guys think it was something recent, or did you think it was something that was from 500 years ago with the painting? Because it surprised me that we find out at the end. I that thought it's it was recent. ancient. I thought, or not ancient, but I thought it was really old too. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to know how far along this person is with their condition. Are they worse than Coulson? Are they just figuring this out, that they have this problem? That would be cool to find out. Yeah, I assumed it was some ancient thing hidden there, or or at least, like, from a few years ago. Mm -hmm. um, like, Garrett did it in his spare time or something. Right? <laughs> yeah, he's, just, he's just going around to churches, like, what can he's I like, write? He's like, he does it the whole time. I actually assumed it was a recent thing because the, the priest was so hesitant to show it to the other priest, and you would think that if they're both men of the church, that if it was a secret, they would both know about it. Then again, who even knows? Um, but And then the church had burned down, so I, I kind of assumed it was one of those things where it was left there, and then something happened, and that's that's why the church went down. Yeah, I assumed it was like in a wall somewhere. Like they, then, they wouldn't yeah. have seen it otherwise. Yeah, like it was hidden, and then they discovered it only because the church burned down. Yeah, yeah, or like one of those things where like you flip the painting, and after it's out of the holder or whatever, and you're like, oh wait, this. This has something on the back of it. Well, it Rumble sounds like it was like national treasure. Be, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like it was supposed to be famous because um, they said, you know, uh, you know, it was a miracle that it survived, but that experts will want to verify that it's the real thing. If nobody had known about it, then you know, there wouldn't be any need to verify it because no one would know what it was. That's, That's true. true. I guess. Well, I guess I thought it was like verifying that it had been in the building. Maybe I don't know. Like, was supposed to be there that he didn't just like bring in a painting. <laughs> like, this it's not even a 500 year old one. They just painted it. Just I know that was confirmed, today. but here's a really old looking painting. Yeah, we actually bought it just down in South Beach, which is where our next scene takes us, and we see Hunter uh, getting getting a little busy. Mm, typical Hunter. Not with Sky. Maybe I, I do don't know want what it. I ship. She's got so many options right now. She wants it. She's like. She's like. Uh, Ward is totally out of the picture right now. I need another distraction. I was thinking it was trip by the end of it, but we can talk Maybe. about ship happiness on the on the bus a little bit later. I'll, I'll, I'll save it. I'll save it. <laughs> save it. <laughs> Write it down. Make it, we're, we'll, we'll definitely Write it get down back and draw to it. little hearts. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. I know we got Zach even saying while we're watching, like I ship it because I yell that all the time when I'm watching. <laughs> um, 
So we see he's he's getting busy with the girl, and he takes something from her and gives it to Sky as she comes by. It's a little flash drive, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sneaky, sneaky. You know, and they're all teasing him that that's how he's that's how he's um, getting it. The the rabbits in the hutch, and then we get the reason they're taking all of this is so that oh. I had, I just want was want to say. The rabbits in the hutch, I think, is like the worst <laughs> code ever. But like, if you say the, the random word is in the random word, we know you're dropping something off. You might as, as well have said, I got it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not even Sky and her witty remarks. <laughs> not even like the eagle has landed or anything yeah. like that. Yeah. I was like, what does that even mean? I, I don't know what a hutch is. Apparently rabbits can go there. I didn't do I a dictionary that. search before we started this panel, so I have, anyone who knows, just tell us. <laughs> Tweet Joyce yeah. to Google. Google. But what a hutch is? Yeah, what's a hutch? It's like the you have it in your living room. It's like where you keep like just a wood big cabinet that you can put your letters Why on. Why would the You've got drawers with random stuff. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe it's like a, like a not a real rabbit, but like a, you know, people have decorations. Must be an old school term. I don't have that in my house. That's what I mean. It sounds like you're a spy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Because normal people don't say that. It's like the letters in the mailbox, and then we're all good. Well, and then the thing gets to be, too, is like, there isn't hardly anybody around her, and she's speeding off, and I doubt the people of South <laughs> she Beach care. Just walked by. They had like almost like a Noxzema commercial before like she came by on the bus. Um, I just went clueless on you guys for a second. Yes. Um, so, we, so then we, what they're setting up is Colson and May are going to do this epic undercover scene and it's so nice to see when first max starts off and and we all had to do a double take because because he cleaned up well in a suit yeah he's so hot (laughs) i I have to say every time i see him he's so good looking let's bring him on the show does joyce have a new favorite character he's just so handsome (laughs) he's funny too i mean again he's he's a good character yeah and we we're learning a very little bit about him, I know we talked about that we wanted to see his character develop more, and we saw like he doesn't like what is it, Kino? Quinoa. 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 <laughs> I don't even know, so I'm not gonna eat it if I can't pronounce it. <laughs> it's not good, yeah. Just FYI, oh, I love it. <laughs> you're alone, there. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> whatever, guys, you're missing out. <laughs> it was a dark time, <laughs> that was such a great like that's great. We're getting to know him, he's a fun character, he's really but really funny, yeah. We all, I even I turned to my like, wait, is that? Is that Mac? Yeah. Because he does look good in a suit. Yeah. He and looks good all really the time. Well. But. <laughs> <laughs> and also looking good all the time is May in that dress. Oh, totally. Yes. Oh, my gosh. She's a knockout. Mm-hmm. Total knockout, especially in this episode. I mean, no, it's just gorgeous. And, yeah. and so great, again, to see if everybody says Felinda. We, we wanted to call it Mason <laughs> <laughs> because we know that. Melinda always comes first. Exactly. <laughs> Wait. <Yes. Hold> on. <laughs> Turn down your dials. That's everybody. not what I meant. <laughs> but she wears the pants in, in every relationship. That's what I was going for. Where's Matt? Uh, yeah, or if nobody's wearing it, it's all good. <laughs> that comes later in the hotel room. Which we'll get into. <laughs> Not like that. I'm gonna get so many comments like bring Matt back and get rid of this oh, girl man. immediately. No, it's late. It's late. It's late right now. We're giddy. It's Sorry, fine. guys. It's fine. Sorry, that was my fault. <laughs> so, Megan Salinas. Which one? What? Um, <laughs> inside joke. Sorry, guys. So, so we they they go into this other undercover and they're this rich couple, and again we get that. Banter, and we get Colson. I thought, you know, I had talked about it earlier about the fact that stop laughing. <laughs> I'm just me. Um, we find out. I like seeing him kind of back to his normal self because at the beginning of this season so far, he's been serious director Colson, and it was fun to see him play around again because they're so good at it. And um, when we even to see May in the field, and she's talking, they didn't notice on the on the bus. That she's laughing. Like, what oh, is that, that sound? So yeah, funny. Okay. What is that? <laughs> I love seeing that side of, of her. I mean, seeing that acting come from Ming Na was 
was so great to it was like refreshing because we're so used to seeing her being this hard ass and totally cold and stoic. But it was really cool to see this part of of her acting skills, you know, come out in this episode. Well, and I loved the way Sky put it because Sky put it basically perfectly. She's like. I think that's more that I've heard her say than I've heard her say in the past year. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, true. I love Fitz. What he goes, that's very alarming. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great background comment. Because we see her, you know, talking to people and she's laughing and she's flirting. And um, can we talk about the rock that she has on her finger? And um, move out of the way, them Kim K. Yeah, exactly. I just, I just love that she turns to Phil at one point and she's like, and you know, smiling. She's like, my face hurts. <laughs> <laughs> like, this isn't natural. Their dynamic was amazing in this episode. I oh, mean, absolutely. it really showed how. How much they trust each other and how much Coulson trusts her and just how much they care about each other. It was cool to hear about their history and and kind of how long ago they were together and how long ago they had this relationship and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, it and was it's, really great to see. It's one thing to hear about it, you know, hear them talk about it, and it's a completely different thing to also see it in their performances because the performances in this episode, I totally bought that they've been friends for years and years and years. And I think they are friends. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Definitely. Definitely. And that, that chemistry definitely shows through because when they, you know, it's easy to write in there, oh, you know, remember back in the day, da 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 But the way they play off each other, it feels really authentic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What did you think of the dance sequence, Zach? I, it was it was awesome. It was it, that was like classic James Bond spy stuff too, sure. and like that's what we want from Agents of Shield. We want spy show because they're like, I'm just thinking about like all the. It reminded me of Archer for a moment, <laughs> like where he's like, "No, you dance and like survey the room as you move." It's the perfect cover, exactly. Until you see somebody you recognize, <laughs> and then yeah, her blown. Exactly. Yeah. The thing that got me, so they see Tal- Talbot across the room, but did he see them at first? Because then all of a sudden, Colson and him are chatting, and I'm like, maybe if they would have just gone to a different room, would they? I think at that point it was. I think when Colson says our cover's blown, like it's a little too late to just kind of turn and run away. Like, you have to kind of approach him and confront the situation. Otherwise, it could... Like, it's better for him to control it right off the bat than it would be to not know what would happen if Talbot spotted him first. That's yeah. true. Talbot, yeah. quote-unquote. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So th- so they're chatting and, and trying to work out a system like, hey, don't tell on me and I won't tell on you and we're all good. We're all copacetic, right? And, and he's like, mm, we'll see. <laughs> And just, you know, maybe. I was like, before I found out it wasn't Talbot, I was like, why isn't Coulson freaking out a little bit more? Like, why isn't he... Well, because the last time they talked, Coulson had just pulled this big bluff. That's you true. You know, with the, oh, there's way more where that came from. So it was kind of like, I got you under, you know, wrapped around my finger, I shouldn't freak out as much type thing. Yeah, because the second he starts to freak out, that's when Talbot would know that he that it was a bluff. Mm-hmm. Because that's all they have, was that jet. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. And there's nobody else in that room with them. And that they've been turning the comm system on and off, so, you know, even their backup is all just sitting on the bus and... To get in there, they would be surrounded. Again, we have May and Golson together, and chances are they could f- have a fighting chance. But it, you don't want to put yourself in that situation if you don't have to for a painting that way. So A painting that might have answers that's like, true. to the huge questions that are going on in his head right now. That's true. They'll always find another way to, to get it as well, because they even said that when, when they realized the painting was gone. So that's the next thing is they, they go and... Since their cover's already blown, they just go and get it. I liked when they see the, what was it, the laser? Um, the laser grid. Laser grid. And Colson's trying to figure it out, and he's like, they already know. <laughs> they already know here. Yeah, you're right. And, and right before that, we had a fun moment where she was trying to get a picture of the guy in the, who owns the house so that they can, you know, get a scanner for his eyes. And... Um, that was just really funny too. Like, honey, don't you know how we're a very modern couple? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the cover is officially blown because they see Tal- Talbot, quote unquote, um, talking to security. So they go, and the painting's gone. Mm-hmm. And as soon as so they, what a clever way! All of a sudden, Hydra agents are in the building, and they have to find a way out, and they go off the balcony. <laughs> uh. It's crazy. Can we, yeah. Hydra agents make really scary, like, SWAT 
SWAT guys. Those, yeah, anytime Hydra agents are in like SWAT gear, it's really creepy. You know, stuff's <laughs> about to go down. Because they cover their whole face, so they're just like nameless, faceless <laughs> drones that will shoot you in the face. And we know those aren't night night guns. Yeah, no. Mm -hmm. they, like and they troopers. better aim. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say they have better aim than stormtroopers. <laughs> I know. Yeah. They're stormtroopers in multiple senses because they're Nazis, so. Very yeah, true. No, that it's makes very sense. True. Very true. <laughs> so they, they get down there, and then all of a sudden, Again, Talbot is out there with his car, and he wants to work with Coulson. And hey, let's bring you on board because I know you want to find out more about this, and we need help finding it out. So help us help you, <laughs> um, and come back to my super secured lair by yourself, and we'll work on this together. And, and he kind of like, all right, let's take an hour, and then we'll we'll figure it out. And he tells May. You know what to do. <laughs> what do you guys think? What do you think was his plan at that point? Roll with it. <laughs> well, at this point, um, the not Talbot, uh, it was revealed that he was, like, we, we didn't know that he was not Talbot yet, but it was revealed that he was working with Hydra because mm -hmm. he was the one that tipped them off, right? Yeah. At this point, I didn't really know what to believe. I was like, oh, my gosh, is, like, Talbot knowingly working with Hydra or have they pulled a fast one on him? Like, what is going on? Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. I, I assumed it was he didn't realize he was working for somebody who was deep, like deeply installed in Hydra. Um, I did not think that it was going to be a that <laughs> twist. Um, but I think Coulson knew it. Like, didn't really know what he was doing. But at the same time, he's like, I'm, I'm Agent Coulson. Like, I got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm Director yeah, he's Coulson. It out. <laughs> and the fact that he, you know, trusts Melinda May to just go in there and and do her thing. It's another aspect of their, like the way they work together and stuff and their trust. Well, I want to get into the whole hotel scene and bus problems and everything like that. But first, we're doing iTunes. Um, Yay! We had a lot. You guys are awesome. Um, we talked about our goal being 300 for, for <laughs> it, and we're... Not not too far off. I went about a hundred off, <laughs> but wow, um, that's it's still, still a lot. it's still a lot. Yeah. And thank you guys. Um, again, we we all do this for free. We love doing it. We love being here. Um, I would say this is one of my favorite panels to come to every <laughs> single night. Um, and just you know, it's fun to talk to you guys. Um, you can tweet us. You can go on YouTube. We try to answer and look at all of them as well. And iTunes, again, helps us out. It lets our bosses know that we're doing a good job. Um, and you can, as Matt says, slap us with a five-star rating. <laughs> and we're going to definitely do shout-outs. So uh, we had a lot, like I said. And some of these I'll have to paraphrase a little bit. But we had our first one is Amazing Podcast with Amazing Host, five stars from Amazing Fangirl. I love this podcast and I look forward to it every week. It is officially my favorite After Buzz podcast. Aww. You guys rock and your commentary really makes me think about things I might have missed. Yay. Hashtag Aww. Hale Coulson. That's why we're yes. here. <laughs> <laughs> amazing fan, you are amazing as well. Uh, next one is Love It, five stars as well. Allison G7. This podcast is truly amazing and I love all and I love all of the After Buzz podcasts. I truly think that the people on this panel is what makes this After Buzz podcast my favorite. You guys always make me laugh with great jokes and shipping characters. <laughs> <laughs> uh, BT Dubs, I totally agree with you guys about Simmons and Ward being a thing, and ultimately, I hope they bang. <laughs> Keep up the amazing work. I was going to say, how old is this? <laughs> because yeah. that hasn't been a thing for a I while. I think it came up last week. It came week. up last That's week. That's true, because I remember way early on we had been shipping them, but that yeah, was way was early on before the Nazi stuff. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I put recent first. I double checked it. Simmons um. is not actually a Hydra agent. <laughs> Let's be clear. Yes. No hooking up with Ward. Nope. No. Not not unless she's drunk or something. Okay, <laughs> next one. As lovely as Gemma. Five stars. Um, I'm going to mispronounce this and I'm sorry. Um, Adler... Rarity? Adler, Adleriardi. Adler, thank you. We'll just go with what Joy said. <laughs> I just discovered this gem of a recap podcast, you guys. You all are so as cute as Simmons and even Aww. more hilarious. Love your analysis, especially the nerd knowledge and ships making up ship names. <laughs> Smiley face. Um, Hashtag Mason. Simmons is pretty cute, so I will definitely take that. Yeah. As a it's a high compliment. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Yeah. All right, next one. Great shows, five stars, Iceman277. Love the show. I enjoy how you guys break down the episodes and make it fun and entertaining to listen. Keep it up. 
Awesome. Thank you. I'm so glad. I mean, it's always exciting to hear from you guys, and I'm glad you're enjoying it as much mm -hmm. as we are. Amazing as usual. True Priscilla. I always look yeah, so the right. Okay. I always <laughs> look forward to listening to the after buzz after the most recent episode. You all give great views and questions concerning the show, and they make me go over things I would never thought of. Looking forward to next week's episode. Keep up the fantastic work. Yeah. Again, this um amazing show, big twist, five stars from Agent of Shield. Ooh. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Um I'm gonna paraphrase this one a, lot, a little bit because it was a little long. Oh my god, it was what Watching last season's episode 10 after Buzz and your theory that Sky's parents were Hydra agents grew a crazy prediction, and her prediction was that um, her Sky's dad and Sky um, are not Hydra, but maybe her uncle is, and he could even be Doctor Whitehall. Ooh, ooh! And they think when they all meet, Sky will turn evil. Um, she thinks that she'll get kidnapped by Reyna, and the team will be forced to let Ward out to find her, and then they see that she's evil, connecting to the above part. Thanks, and again, such a great after buzz. I like huh? that theory. Maybe. Not gonna lie. Cool. Maybe next episode. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a nice little bit of drama to add. Good next one. one. Awesomeness, five stars. Jilly Bean 729 says, this podcast always keeps me so entertained. Love listening to everyone's theories and feelings on the episode. Keep up the marvelous work. Oh. You're all doing a fantastic job. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, great podcast. Uh, I want to say Giles C3. Yeah, I would okay. say that. Yeah. Um, the Buffy in me wants to say that. <laughs> Go love, Giles. This last, uh, love this last podcast. It explained a lot of things that I didn't remember or get since I'm not a comic reader. Love the guest and hope he comes back. Thank you for giving another great podcast, and I hope you reach your 300 review goal by the end of the season. I'll be tuning in every week. Cool. Aww, thank Thanks you for guys. helping us get there. Yeah, thank Aww. you. <laughs> you guys Thanks. are the best. But yeah. Seriously, yeah, if you guys do that, even if you email, you know, after buzz as well, you can find that on the website. Um, all of it helps and we love it. And like I said, we love to hear from you guys and interact. Yeah. So let's get back to the bus and all of their issues that are going on. Oh, before before we do, um, mm -hmm. do we want to talk a little bit about uh, May and Coulson and the conversation May doesn't want to have? Well, we can get to that when we when we go back okay. to the fight scenes cool. and all that kind of cool. stuff. So yes, just definitely. remind me when we get there. <laughs> um, so, so we're on the bus. Everybody's there except for May and Coulson. Um, I love this group dynamic. They are hilarious. And... We find out Hunter has an ex-wife that he likes to tell his story about, and now that she's evil. <laughs> I love the way he told it. He's like, interspecies marriage didn't work or something. Yeah. He was human and she was diabolic. Like uh, a diabolical demon, demon <laughs> bitch. I don't know. <laughs> it makes me wonder, is it somebody that we already met? And then all of a sudden we're like, oh, that person is evil. Possibly. I don't think so. Although, it, because it's Marvel, like, my brain went to, <laughs> wait, was he actually hooking up with, like, an uh, like a space demon of some <laughs> yeah, time? That's what I thought, too. I was like, wait, this, this is the right universe for that stuff. He's <laughs> like, I wasn't being facetious. Like, that that was true. No, it like, it the happened. horns and the red skin, like, the whole nine yards. <laughs> yeah, no, you went there. <laughs> So we see them, and, and they're kind of keeping an eye and wondering what's going on with May and Colston. And Sky's going, you know, the extra mile to figure out what's going on with their special mission and everything like that. And, you know, because she wants to, she feels left out. And I do feel like even when Colston was talking to her, he's kind of picking on her a little bit. Was that just me? That he's like, do I need to explain operations to you again? She's like, no. She's like, what is happening? Why is everyone so weird towards me? <laughs> I and think again, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I think he knows that she's probably nosing in, like, getting, like, digging into what they're doing, doing stuff she's not supposed to. And they don't have a lot of ways to control her in this, mm -hmm. like, tiny shield. Yeah, and again, they touched on it at the end of the last episode, is that, you know, he's, he is trying to protect her because they, you know, they they have the same GH, you know, kind of cocktail both that, that saved them both, but it's affecting him so badly, so he, he worries, of course, about what's going to happen with her, at, you know, further on down the road. But again, I think it would be kind of important to be like, hey, let's share this information so that in the event that something horrible does happen, that we're prepared for it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would think. I don't know. So we have a, their, their big problem comes, again, when we get to the hotel and May had gone 
well, we can touch on this right uh, quickly, um, that May had gone there with Coulson's orders, and it turns out it's not Talbot. It's Mr. Bakshi. <laughs> yeah. um, what an amazing name. And he's actually got that face. I don't know what you I don't remember what we call it. The something. S- the Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, what, face changer. Yeah, Black Widow had mm-hmm. in Captain America 2. Yeah. Which was a nice little tie-in, like a little throwaway to the people who like remembered it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's nice when they can like t- tie that in because like it's such a simple piece of tech, but like the idea that it wasn't just a throwaway from the movie. Exactly. That's true. It's a nice touch, and it made for for some really interesting stuff in this episode. So they have that, and you know we figure out it's it's not Talbot, it's it's Hydra, and it's Agent Thirty Three that we saw the other day, or not the other day, well the other day, um, that that she is officially brainwashed. I thought maybe it was a question mark, and we had this theory that when she went to the bus to talk to Coulson, that that maybe she was going to go in there and go, by the way, I've infiltrated Hydra, but that wasn't the case. And instead, she sticks this contraption on the bus and leaves with Coulson. And this weird spider legs start <laughs> coming out. The, yeah. the mechanics of the sabotage. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like grows these little tentacle things and then like hops into the server. It was gross. <laughs> it looked like biotech because it looked like almost it was alive yeah. as it came yeah. out it's of like there. like squiggling around. It's creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Probably came from that alien life. <laughs> Just more stuff they're taking from, from outer space. My poor dude. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so they leave that at the bus and all of a sudden the power starts going out and they're like what what is going on and they're following and the doors are locking and all of these everything starts to go wrong and Fitz is really the only one that knows the bus and tech all at the same time and they're trying to figure out what what to do next and what's going to happen I was actually surprised that I was waiting for them to make the connection that that wasn't May and that maybe that person who wasn't May put that that little thing there to mm-hmm. ruin the bus, because um, you know they gave the close-ups of their faces, going like, well, like May's kind of acting weird. Mm-hmm. So I'm surprised that they didn't make that connection once they realized that something was happening to the to the ship, but it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, they didn't mention it at all. Yeah, That's I was really waiting funny for that it. Funny they mentioned that because, yeah, they just kind of like, oh, something's on here. Let's get rid of it. But nobody asked the origin of although I guess during that time you're just in panic mode and go okay how do we that's true get rid of this it's kind of like oh, let's let's stop the bus from blowing up and then we can ask questions yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly let's get to the immediate danger first <laughs> and and we see Fitz go off with Hunter and, and Simmons was still back and Zach was correct that this that the Simmons <laughs> mirage <laughs> is still is still in play but definitely in a lesser um capacity than it was before um just kind of egging him on but not as many conversations she is still trying to encourage him to like get involved Mm -hmm. and to be more outspoken you know possibly so that he doesn't need her anymore i was surprised that she came back because i I thought we were done with it i think we're done with it when you know at the end of this episode but it was really surprising at first i Mm -hmm. think he's done with having it having the fake the imaginary simmons there to be simmons but his subconscious is still holding back. He still needs something to push him forward. So this is his subconscious really pushing him to be outgoing, to Mm -hmm. do all the stuff, to have someone to bounce off of. Because whatever went wrong in his brain, whatever just disconnected up there, is just... It can't. It, this is the only way it can process information now. If he's not going to listen to himself as his sub subconscious, he would probably just listen to Simmons anyway. So mm-hmm. Simmons as his sub subconscious was, you know, the only way he would push himself forward. Mm-hmm. That's a good way of thinking of it because I was just thinking of it as him, you know, wanting to talk to her. Yeah. Being insane. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad that you know it's it's a little deeper than that. Yeah. That's a good way to get the actress on the show when she's only on <laughs> half the time, too, so she yeah. gets a paycheck. But it was um, a nice way of, it was a nice, uh, it was symbolic in a way where it's like the whole episode, you can tell they were, he was getting more and more distant from that extension of himself, and the end was just a nice little goodbye, I thought. Mm-hmm. It was sweet. And the other people on the plane are filling in the gaps where Simmons was, and once he lets himself, you know, be with them, 
they're going to be able to help him a lot more. And we see that, you know, we've already seen that with Mac. And even tonight we saw it. So he goes off with Hunter to to start to get the plane to go back together so before it doesn't go boom. (laughs) And... You know, they're, they're fixing it together, and he picks the least tech-savvy person to go with him. But they're able they're able to piece it together, and um, I like the moment once they figured out that, you know, they did save the plane, that Hunter goes to high-five him, and he's like, oh, oh yes. <laughs> yeah. that is correct. Um, so, so they save the day, and the plane's okay as well. Um, so we'll go to... So we talked about a little bit um, fake May. There's a lot of of fakes going on. So meanwhile, while the bus was having those problems, fake May and Coulson are walking in the in the hotel, going going to confront Talbot, and and everything. And they get they're walking down, and he's starting to realize like something's something's wrong here. So he's testing her a little bit, and the thing that gets her is. A cup of coffee. <laughs> that was the red flag. I yeah. didn't. I don't think I knew that about May. I don't think that was ever mentioned in previous the previous season or any other previous episodes. But yeah, I love that. That just goes to show it's a testament of how well that he knows her. Mm-hmm. Well, and I I loved that. Like at a certain point, we could tell that he knew something was up because you know the way he turns and he's smiling and kind of flirting with her. It's just like. He knows exactly what's up. Well, I think the first hint was is when they were driving and he, you know, approaches that topic again that they want to talk about that if if Coulson starts to go the way of Garrett, that he wants May to put him down, basically, uh, shoot him in the head. And she doesn't want to talk about it, doesn't want to talk about it. And all of a sudden in the car, they talk about it and she grabs his hand. And I thought for, for me, that's when I was like, Oh, he knows. Yeah. yeah. But also, That's what it was. May wouldn't so easily agree to do what he's asking her to do. I mean, mm-hmm. he said it in so many words, but she understood, and she wouldn't, the real May wouldn't have been like, I understand, like, I'll do it. No, the real May would have done what the real May did this episode and be like, I'm not going to shoot you in the head. Mm-hmm. That was another, I think, a little hint for him. Exactly. Yeah. So he finds out <laughs> May doesn't like coffee. Bam! <laughs> Also, May it. wouldn't agree to go on a date with Coulson. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> Especially that easily. Yeah, yeah. no, because we've seen their banter back and forth. She didn't even like admitting that, you know, that she liked dancing. Mm-hmm. She's like, no, I didn't like it. He's like, maybe a little bit. She's like, a little. Okay. She should have been like, I'll go on that date with you if you don't make me blow, <laughs> like, shoot you in the head later on. <laughs> I will have a date with you, <laughs> and I will wear the same lingerie. Um... <laughs> So, so that goes on, and we saw May is all tied up by um, Bakshi in the in the hotel room. So there's there's a bunch of different fights going on. <laughs> there's Agent Thirty Three against Coulson. There's May against Bakshi in the hotel room, and then all of a sudden it switches, and May. You know, I, who was it? Was it you that said, like, I wonder what's happening, what yeah. happened to him? Because she got out. And she just comes at him, and I was making the joke oh, yeah. that that's the only time you don't want Agent May coming at you in, in her lingerie. Because <laughs> <That's true. laughs> the last time, like, we saw it before it cut away, he was slammed up against the wall. And then that and was. And she's just, like, in her it, banshee scream. Like, <laughs> And then she runs out of the room, but he doesn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like, what happened she to that guy? She took care of him. She took care of Don't him. Don't worry about him in the other room. I do have a question from a guy's perspective <laughs> on the lingerie. Is That seemed like a lot of lingerie for being under a dress. Like, not being a standalone item. Well, quite honestly, I mean, well, she's in shape. Because I feel like normally in a dress like that, because it's it's not flattering, there would be Spanx under there. <laughs> 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 but, like, that was kind of some sexy lingerie. That's, like, she I, knows what's up. <laughs> it was sexy, but it wasn't. It was still tasteful. It oh, wasn't yeah, like yeah. It wasn't like, oh, I've got this skimpy... He, like, she's out with Coulson. She's out with her friend. She hates doing this stuff. She hates mm-hmm. looking like that anyway, so she's not going to do the whole sexy underneath but thing. Yeah, no, the but, but it was sexy. No, yeah, it was. Yeah, no, it was mm-hmm. very sexy. She made but it there sexy. Are, there's a wide variety of lingerie, yeah. Zach. So. To go under a dress like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the dress was pretty full coverage, except for the low-cut... Uh, yeah, it was, frontal it was a little low-cut, and then I think it had the slit 
um, That's of true. it. It's pretty short. That's true. I would have worn little shorts underneath just because, like, Me too. she's bound to kick somebody at some point and just, you know, just to keep everything safe. <laughs> 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 you know, nobody bought her dinner first except mm-hmm. Colson. And so I, I would have probably have done that if I were her. <laughs> um, but she's awesome and you know, she can fight anybody in any outfit whatsoever. So all of a sudden she comes out and, you know, Colson, you know, goes after Bakshi because he's apparently okay a little bit later and they find the painting and he's running off in one direction and then we have May versus May. Which what a cool, so cool. fight scene. I wanna say, um, I read that Kevin Taker and choreographed the whole fight. I'm going to assume, I hope I'm right, that he is Jed Whedon's brother-in-law. Um, he's a choreographer, and he also produced Mortal Kombat Legacy, which is the web series. A web series oh. online. So he's a choreographer and producer for that web series, and he choreographed this this May vs. May fight, which that is makes really cool. So much sense now that yeah. you've said that. And <laughs> props to my friend David Crabtree who yeah, edited David. this episode. He did an amazing job, especially in that fight scene. It was so well done. Um, he was a guest on our show, I think, for the season finale of last mm-hmm. season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So check that out. He's really awesome. No, so he's... props to David. Amazing job to both of those yeah. guys. And yeah. And I thought one of the coolest parts of that fight scene, and I want to hear what you guys thought, was the slow motion headbanging yes. through the table. The best part. Amazing. <laughs> that was. Although another part got me too, just the part where May jumped up into the air and kicked the fake May with both feet at the same time. Yep. But you're absolutely right. The table slam was the best part. <laughs> it was the, the best finale. Well, it wasn't quite the finale, but. It was a good intro to the finale of the fight. It was a pretty long fight scene as yeah. well. Yeah. They were, like, well, because I guess um, Agent 33 was trained in the same training that May went through, and she calls it out. She's like, I was S.H.I.E.L.D. I know all your moves. And May's like, you don't know all my moves. <laughs> <laughs> she should have snapped or something. She snapped fake May. <laughs> 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 yeah, and 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 that was pretty funny too. I have to wonder too if she knew if it, if she had met Agent Thirty Three at some point because obviously she didn't expose what her face looked like. But they're also all on secret missions, and who knows? I, I mean, I think they know. I think she knows of Agent Thirty Three because in the last episode they they mention again the the talent grab, so they know that Agent Thirty Three has gone missing. Mm-hmm. So um, it's I think they know of each other, but like. Yeah, it's hard to say whether or not they actually knew one another. And I really appreciated the fact that Real May didn't try to unmask um, Agent 33. That would have made the fight a little less effective, a little less cool. It kind of gave me this, like, weird orphan black vibe. It was really interesting. (laughs) It was fun. I did want to see it come off just to get her reaction to seeing Agent 33. Because I was intrigued as to what her reaction would have been. Yeah, yeah and if they knew each other or not. I agree. Which, at least at the end, like, maybe it would have... We saw that her face get burnt, but did that... I, I didn't think it went yeah. back, no, did it? It, it was, was still, still May, May yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, here's the question. Is Agent 33 dead, or was she just incapacitated? Because if she's dead, then the stuff that Coulson was talking to her about, you know, in terms of, like, how he's mm. the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. now... You know, that all that stuff is kind of, like, out for Hydra because they, they didn't know. They were like, okay, who's who's leading your operation? Where's your operation at? She knows those things now. What do we think, Consensus? Do you think Agent 33 is dead? Or dead? Let's go with I don't Zach. think she's dead. Um, it didn't seem like that was she got shocked really bad. Mm-hmm. Probably some brain damage. Yeah. I don't know. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. think that was May's goal necessarily mm-hmm. was to kill her. And I also don't want to assume that, that Bakshi's dead either. Mm-hmm. But No, yeah, he got hit with a night night gun. I don't think yeah. yeah, that's true. I don't think either of them are dead. Well, definitely not Agent Thirty Three. Okay. I, I wasn't sure because she she just wasn't moving. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think she died? I don't think so. I mean, I could I could definitely see it going either way, but I I don't think so. Mm-hmm. She was just down for the count. <laughs> yes, definitely. And I liked how she was how she got down for the count. Where May's like, if you were really me, you wouldn't talk so much. Yeah, <laughs> electrocutes her. And yeah, so she's down for the count. Fox, she's down for the count with a night night gun. Coulson's got the painting, and they're all off together, back safe. 
and sound for now. Yay. Which we'll is see. nice. We'll see about that. <laughs> yeah, it won't last very yeah. long. And so they go back to, to the bus and to the um, to their hideout, and they call Talbot. And that was actually a really fun conversation. They have, like, I like their banter now because he was annoyed, you know, he's He's Talbot. He's, he's kind well, of a he, jerk, and he's an antagonist. Mm-hmm. And prior to this, they they didn't have an understanding. And right now, they're kind of at a state of equilibrium, you know, where where they've reached an understanding. But it wasn't like that before. So now that they have, it's it is fun to watch them get, go back and forth. Mm-hmm. It's sort of a respect, like a mutual respect. But like, I'm not going. Well, neither one's going to give in. Yeah. Yeah. No, definitely. So he. He tells Talbot about everything that happened, except that they still have the painting. But, you know, yeah, it was destroyed nuance. in the fight. Womp, womp. What can we do? <laughs> Sucks when that happens. <laughs> Super oh, sad. Turning this off so you can't locate me. <laughs> I love how I love how um, Talbot just automatically assumes that they're always going to be telling him the truth now. Mm-hmm. Even though they, you know, they called his bluff and everything, and they're not being 100% honest with him. Not in a bad way, but I love how he's like, oh, okay, it's burned I guess oh I don't think he buys it for a second no no I I I think it's just one of those things where it's like what's he gonna do he seemed like he had that sort of naive attitude towards them when they were talking to him I felt that a little bit because he's kind of like a you know a boy scout so he's like oh this guy's not gonna lie to me but I'm sure he's definitely I don't think he'd be completely surprised later on if he found out but I think at this point he's probably like okay well, well we true. see he does have a gullible streak in that they're able to fool him. We've, yeah. we've seen that before. Mm-hmm. So that's fair, but I, I certainly don't think he trusts them. Oh, I don't <laughs> yeah, think he trusts yeah, them. No. Yeah. He in also general. doesn't know what it is or why it's important at all. So he's not, I don't think he's stressed out about it. He's like, oh, this painting that I didn't know was important <laughs> yeah. might not that's exist why anymore. Why you could <laughs> think I was interested in that? Like, maybe you could help me figure out, oh, you don't want to? Oh, okay, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Cool. I'm a busy man. <laughs> I got a promotion. But he still wants to be friends <laughs> and continue those conversations. He probably doesn't have very many Aww. friends. He's like, please don't hang up. I know. <laughs> I'm all alone. Maybe try a new facial hair setup. And you know, I know. Have more friends. Seriously. You, you know, know that if it's a mustache. little aggressive. You know if the mustache goes away, we're all going to jump, right? We'll be like, ah, oh, where'd it go? We're not going to recognize it. I want him to grow screen. a handlebar mustache. <laughs> Look, he's got Hello, one more mustache. <laughs> swirl, swirl, swirl. He's got one more month, Move- once at the end of at the end of November, <laughs> November, he's got to shave it off. Are you growing your beard for November? Uh, I think I might do a mustache. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> nice. It's going to be for charity. I haven't okay. seen you without a beard. I don't think. No one has seen you without <laughs> oh, okay. a beard. Well, that, that makes sense. <laughs> you don't want to know what's under there. <laughs> a baby face. <laughs> yeah, you'll get, you'll get carded for everything. <laughs> They'll be like, "No Nyquil for you." <laughs> so, so they, so they're done talking to Talbot, and then they have their heart to heart, where May said says her plan so she always she had a plan in mind he was gonna go to a cabin in the australian outback because he likes kangaroos (laughs) and that is adorable (laughs) um and that's her plan she's just gonna take care of him like we're not gonna let this get you know i'm gonna i'm gonna stop this we're gonna find a cure you're i'm not gonna shoot you in the head and for a second there i thought that colston was gonna allow that because he's like kangaroos. Me too. And it's the <laughs> sweetest thing that anybody's ever done for him. Mm-hmm. Selfless and everything, but your orders are you're going to shoot me in the head. And he he's like, used I'm still your boss. Exactly. And he used her words against her <laughs> and said, "It's time to deal with reality." Yeah. Yeah. Nostalgia's nice. I, I, this is, I feel like I'm maybe like forgetting something. What is it, it about him that's going to be dangerous? Well, you saw how Garrett was at the end of last season. He was a megalomaniac. He was just insane. I guess I just took that as Garrett because he's <laughs> like, well, he's a bad guy, yeah, and he'd kind of yeah. lost it by going over to Hydra. I maybe I just didn't connect those two things. I just put him in a different camp. But if if Fury tells May to watch Coulson, he's asking her to do that for a reason. And whether or not she knows exactly what that reason is, she obviously thinks it's it's a big deal. So, I mean, I don't even think no one really fully knows what 
the real consequences could be, but she's told to watch him by Fury. She's going to do it. Mm-hmm. Well, and Coulson's own words um, from his report, you know, before before he died, uh, were that this should never be done because it never ends well. And so there, there's that. And, hey, I yeah, Garrett was definitely an example, but I think, you know, when you yourself are saying this is a terrible idea and you're finding out about it months and months later, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, maybe this isn't good. Yeah, <laughs> I think more of it, he gets nervous, and I agree with you, Zach. I think it's still the person... And and Garrett already had issues prior <laughs> to having true. the same stuff that Colson had. So obviously it's on like this whole steroid, you know, <laughs> level and I can see the universe. <laughs> but he did and I think that's more what he's worried about is is, is if he's gonna go crazy enough where he's a danger to everybody. And I I don't think in the way that Garrett was in terms of I'm going to kill everybody but maybe put them in situations because he thinks he's on this higher plane and he's going to bring everybody to it and the world has to change based off of that part of it I think that's what he's nervous about is if he goes that crazy and thinks like you know how people are like oh I can fly off this cliff you know if they're if they're having (laughs) hallucinations from a drug or I don't know whatever I've seen in movies (laughs) and it's like (laughs) I think he's worried more about that yeah, well, I guess aspect. If that's the thing, I would. I think May's got a good plan. Stick him in the outback, yeah. leave him a lot of paper and pen, and then he can just go to town, and maybe he'll come up with a solution eventually. He, he could kill a lot of wild animals if he needs to for protection uh, in that mind, mind frame he'll be in. You know, like, he'll go full Bear grills and, like, be crazy. Kangaroo steaks are really tasty. Oh. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, G is bound to affect everybody differently. I mean, Mm -hmm. who knows how it will affect Sky in the future. I mean, it could be bad or it could be really, really good for her. We don't even know what what she is yet. I still think the weird thing is, too, is it's all of a sudden, like, once they know it gets worse, is that because, like, us as humans, like, when we're sick and if we start to worry about being sick that we get more sick? Mind over matter. Yeah, exactly. It's... You know, I've heard people say like being sick is sick is like ninety percent mental and ten percent actually being well, sick. And it is might it that it might also be something that's like embedded in like the genetic code of you know of you know the GH was it one two three whatever it was three twenty five three twenty five there we go could be you know in the genetic code of like. I assume we can all say that that creature was a Cree. Probably? Not confirmed I think yet. it's pretty much, it's yeah. like yeah. All, but all but confirmed. confirmed. Yeah, it's but, unofficially official. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could be just that some, yet yeah, that particular knowledge would unlock something within that formula and... You know that would be activated in the bloodstream or something. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea. We, that could I mean, be. Marvel's moved into the magic realms at this point, um, with like stuff in Guardians and Thor. Like they're they're open to that world, so mm-hmm. there's no reason that a slightly magical thing of when you know it changes it yeah. can't be applied. No, that's a good that's point. True. So we'll get to our final scene, which had Reyna, our which, girl, our flower dress girl. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> this scene. It's kind of crazy because, so she gets in the car, and all of a sudden, Whitehall is in the back, and he puts this thing on her hand, and it's going to kill her in 48 hours, unless she brings back, and I forget the name of it. <laughs> the obelisk. Obelisk, thank you. Unless she brings back the obelisk to him. Yeah. Um, and so we realize they're not playing for the same team at all anymore. I mean, she was playing with, playing with, quote-unquote, um, with Garrett, of earlier on, you know, to kind of work for Hydra, and all of a sudden now she's just with Sky's dad, and it's definitely going to create some interesting yeah. <laughs> problems uh, next week, as we also saw in the previews. Just when she feels safe, just when she feels she has everything under control and doing whatever she, you know, everything's going fine, doing whatever she's doing. This happens. Don't feel like that. It's not going to yeah, end no, well. Yeah, you start no. to feel like that. Yeah, you can't feel safe when the world will crumble <laughs> yeah. around you. It exactly. Was, it was really cool, though. I mean, the, for as long as we've known um, Whitehall, I kind of felt like he wasn't so much of a threat. Like he didn't seem like he just seemed to operate remotely, which is what he said to Reina. Like the best thing is to have someone do the dirty work for you. So now he's on the front lines. We're going to see more of him, and I'm excited to see him as more of this menacing, calculated villain in the show. So to kind of come out of the sidelines and act actively be evil 
and start with Reyna will be really interesting. Yeah, getting his hands dirty. It was really creepy, actually, to see the rug pulled out from under her. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was like, whoa. It's, it's fun to see kind of villain against villain. I'm kind of you know, boss villain against <laughs> one of the sub, you know, ones that you meet earlier on, but it, it still creates a different dynamic within people that are all against S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, you know, you have Reyna's group and, and Sky's dad, and you have, you know, Whitehall and, and Hydra, and then you've got Talbot in the army. <laughs> kind of all these three, and, and I hate to call the, you know, U.S. government <laughs> army <laughs> bad guys, but you have all these kind of people against our our heroes in here and even they're fighting amongst each other so yeah. that kind of creates a fun dynamic as well so, don't know who to trust i know you never know only All right. crazy times ahead let's get into predictions and now you're after buzz tv predictions megan wants to go for a second time <laughs> um I'm, no, I can't. I'm just putting. I'm just. I'm just saying. I don't saying know if you this do. is jumping the gun, but next episode, Sky's dad officially. Mm -hmm. There uh, we go. Yeah. I don't. I think what what's going to happen is she's going to be led to her father without knowing he's her father, and I mean, she, maybe she'll form some sort of. Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Like, sh she'll really, he'll appeal to her somehow, and she won't understand why, and then they'll have this sort of bond, and then she'll end up inadvertently working against she S.H.I.E.L.D. at some point because of him. I don't know. I mean, he's definitely going to try to turn her yeah. at some point. Yeah. Um, but the question is how that's going to tie into all the Hydra stuff. Like, what does the obelisk have to do with it? I still like the inhuman theory. Mm -hmm. I think it ties perfectly into the rest of the MCU um, in terms of like how they're building everything else, where their future plans are going. Yeah. It fits so well, I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> You're probably right. <laughs> I liked one of our, their fans theory that, um, that maybe Ward would have to help get Sky back because the preview almost made it look like um, Sky went of her own free will with Reyna because she's getting answers about her dad, which was the whole reason that she even infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. in the first place was to find her parents. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe she wants answers. And um, after seeing that and, and reading, I, I kind of, I'm going to go with that person and say maybe, and also the, the bus, the power went out. Like, did Ward kind of secretly yeah, get out of his... Well, that was, yeah. it was also on the bus, right? He's back in the base. Is he? Okay. I thought he was on the bus with them. That's why Sky always goes down there to talk to him. No, because yeah, that's... In Vault D. Because when Sky talked about the guy she had a crush on, and then I think it was... I think she said he's always in he's the... Like, he's like, oh, in no, our he's basement. in the basement. Yeah. In our basement, but they're uh, on the bus. He's back in their home base. Okay, okay. okay makes sense. Under, so then he's still stuck there. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I did find that interesting that, you know, if he, if Raina supposedly told him where Sky's dad is, maybe he needs to be let out of his cage for maybe. a little bit. <laughs> maybe. Well, thank you guys for joining us. And Zach, where can the people find you? Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at that Zach Wilson. Also here at After Buzz, uh, I've got Doctor Who, Doctor Who Classics, uh, Resurrection, uh, Sleepy Hollow coming up next, so tune in. Cool. And you can follow me on Twitter at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. I'm also on a bunch of shows here at AfterBuzz. <laughs> you guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at J Azuri, and you can find me on the Sunday Night Walking Dead podcast, Monday Night Gotham podcast, and tonight. And you can find me on Twitter at Kristen Carroll13. You can find me on the Star Wars Rebels podcast. That'll be yeah. tomorrow with Megan <laughs> and Dylan. And um, I've also been doing a few red carpets and junkets. Uh, check out Jake Gyllenhaal um, <laughs> at, on Anatomy of a Movie. Um, so thank you guys, and thank you guys. And um, hopefully Matt will be back next week. So all you Lieber, Lieber fans? No. <laughs> no. No. Lieber friends, right? Lieber, Lieber uh. friends uh, can stay tuned for that. So yeah. we'll see. You guys next week. Bye. From executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.